Welcome back to T20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, Fear No Equal, and Kron. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the sixth and final encounter in a Vampire Count's castle, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. Plus two short bow in hand, plus one arrows in the quiver, instrument of the bard slung over my back. I have 155 on 155 HP. I have a plus two shield and a warhammer in hand. For spell slots, I have three first, three second, three third, one fourth, one fifth, one seventh. And for my channel divinity, I have both still. And I have two out of three slots on my 10 bag of tricks. I've got 80 hit points out of 118. Four first level slots, three second level slots, three third, a fourth, a fifth, and an eight. Arcane recovery is used up. 206 out of 206 HP. I have both uses of Indomitable and Second Wind still available. I have a Great Axe plus two in hand and my winged boots. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has a vampire lord who's running the vampire castle. Well, what's left of it, they've killed pretty much everybody else. He is accompanied by four whites. They have multi-attack with two long swords or two long bow attacks. They could also life drain which does a bit of necrotic damage. They can reduce hit points by the amount of damage dealt. They resist necrotic and non-magical, non-silvered weapon damage. The vampire is the same vampire you know and love. Non-magical weapon resistance, necrotic resistance. Passive perception of 17, so rogue, you're gonna have to make some rolls. They have three legendary resistances per day. They can regenerate. They have an unarmed strike and a bite attack. They can charm people. They also have three legendary actions per the start of their turn, which they can use to move without provoking opportunity attacks. They can unarm strike or they can bite. Those are my vampires. Terrain. Terrain is pretty closed in. You're in an office coming up the stairs from the room you were just in. Tactics. What do you guys think for tactics in this fight? Moving forward and hitting dodge. <laughs> do you want to upcast sunbeam for sunlight damage that's consistent or just sunburst? I think taking those whites off the table would be nice. Although I guess the spirit guardians is also kind of going to do that but the sooner we can take them away the less likely they are to knock off the cleric's concentration right contemplating whether or not i should throw some more animals at people but that's more just for me the wizard never has to contemplate that he throws animals at people all the time sounds good let's go and roll some initiative anybody have higher than a 20 Anyone have between a 20 and a 15? 17 for the rogue. Anyone have between a 15 and a 10? I have a 10 on the vampires. Who's got between a 10 and a 5? Eat, wizard. 6 on the fighter. I have a 5. And I need an owl. Weird owl has a 3. Took me 5 encounters, but I finally did it. I beat most of you. Now is my time to shine. Blind Oracle, you're up. Yeah. Hmm. Snipe the guy from downtown. Bring this whole thing crashing to the ground. Sure. Bonus action hide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like the nonchalance. I'm like, yeah, might as well. 25? 25 will do it. Let's go ahead and shoot the white just in front of us. Does a 28 hit. 28 will connect, yeah. For 41 points of damage. I'll just hang here. <laughs> At the end of your turn, the vampire's going to use a legendary action. He's going to move up to there. Then it's the vampire's turn. The vampire's going to try to charm the fighter. Fighter, please give me a DC 17 wisdom save versus charm. We got a plus three here, but we do have advantage. It's going to be a 22. 22 will do it. Then the vampire is going to move over here. The whites are going to switch to their longbows and open fire at the cleric. 17 and 11 to hit you. Those both miss. AC is 24. Next guy's going to fire. He's going to get a 17 and a 14 and then move to there. This guy's going to move over to here, take two shots. 19 and a 11 to hit you. Both miss. 18 and a 15 to hit you. After the vampire goes the Asia Wolf. Toss me. Sunburst, because I don't need to actually move, because it's a point I choose. You have to be able to see the target, I imagine. DC 18 con save. Undead have disadvantage. If they fail, they blind. Over channel it, so 12d6. 12d6 is going to go 72 plus 5 is 77. You're going to do some damage to yourself. Five dice now. That's a 40. Vampire's going to get a 22 to save, so he's going to take 38. Southernmost white is going to get an 8. He's going to take 77 points of damage and drop. The white just above that is going to get a 13. He's going to take 77 points of damage and drop. Eastern remaining white is going to get a 5. He's going to take 77 points of damage and drop. And then the remaining white is going to get an 8. He's going to take 77 points of damage and drop. The end of your turn, I'm going to use my legendary action to move to there. 
that was the Asia Wolf. Now the second half of the Asia Wolf term, the Simulacrum. Move forward and Magic Vessel at fifth level. Ice number is three. Three plus one is four. Four plus five for an Evoker is nine. Fifth level Magic Missile is going to be seven missiles times seven is 63. After that, I'm going to use a legendary action to move back. After the Azure Wolf is the Fear. I'm just going to head straight to the Vampire through my allies. Dashing to get there. I mean, I'm dashing all the time, but... At the end of your turn, we're going to try to hit you. Vampire gets a 20 to hit you. That'll hit. It's going to grapple you. After the Fear is the Kron. I will have to follow Fear Not Equal and dash as far as I can get. After the Kron, we're going to go to the Owl. Let's just move them right north to declare. After the Owl, we're going to go to the Blind Oracle. Dash, take the shot into the vamp. A halfling luck kicks in for a crit. (laughs) (laughs) Every time you've grappled. (laughs) It has literally been every time you grappled. It's true. (laughs) You were just saying something about correlation and causation earlier. I was actually, so that's on me. 78 points of damage. 78 points of damage, vampire drops. And that's the end of the encounter. And that's the end of the dungeon. You guys loot your way through the castle, taking everything that's not nailed down, and only until the rogue gets there with his pry bar to peel it off for you. You find 42,000 gold worth of treasure that comes out to a split of 10,500 gold pieces each. You find four magic items, which are a mantle of spell resistance, a ring of free action, a spell scroll of holy aura, and a spell scroll of dominate monster. I don't know the reason that the cleric would need access to two holy auras terrifying if true well you could cast it twice but its duration is up to one minute it also allows you to use holy aura and eighth level spirit guardians in the same dungeon that's true that is true vampires are defeated the castle is clear of undead maybe the adventurers take this as their base maybe they think that you know scrubs used to live here and so we need something more high class something more impressive they move their way on to somewhere else the next dungeon is a demonic cult uprising and you'll have to fight a set of six encounters all based on that theme and stop the demonic cult from doing demonic culty things you know like they always do but we'll see what happens with that next time the adventurers have defeated the vampire lord so that's the final encounter in this dungeon the players will now level up to level 16 and move on to the next dungeon next week i'll release a video with all six encounters from the vampire count's castle and we'll talk about the particular challenges of the different encounters thank you for stopping by i'm sarson zero and i will see you next time